There are 38 members in the British Country Music Hall of Fame. We're about to put three more in. Number 39 comes from a wee village up in Scotland. Please welcome on the stage, Mr. Geordie Jack. about getting up the way of the valleys. Jody, a native of a wee village called Gillespie. There's 1,600 people who live there. That's only about four times as many as in this room. And out of this, there was a five-piece band, all living within 10 miles of the village, who went on to create national and international fame. It's just south of Inverness. So it's a long way if you're going to get on the circuit there. They began by playing South Bend. If you're from Scotland, you play songs about Scotland. Celtic songs. Not the Andy Stewart stuff. Real deep, straight stuff about the hills, the glens, and the life, and the loves. He grew the band into the UK's most successful band of the 80s, called Colorado. In the 80s, it became voted the best British band for five successive years in the charts. <laughs> Nine years, he said. He was on another chart. Because of his brilliance and the brilliance of his band, he got to back major stars. Melbourne Montgomery, she recorded with George Jones, Dean Pitney, and just about everybody else. Played with his band because he toured with uh, Vernon Oxford. Peach picking time in Georgia. The Georgian was part of his touring rights and he went with them all. There was a train whistle coming down the valley and a scrubby little man with a cloth around his neck and a great style. Boxcar Willie broke the British scene from a man who had a record label in a place called Bigger just outside Edinburgh. Big R Records was it on there. Big R wanted a big name to follow Boxcar. Picked him to tour with Boxcar Willie because they knew he would pick it. He then toured with both Boxcar and the late great the lady who died this year, Miss Jean Shepherd, and it was some great, great tours of those went out. He provided all the backing. He was the very first Scottish band ever to play at the Wembley Festivals. Went on to play many, many times. He was almost on uh, the presenter's Christmas list at one time, but uh, it was there. He toured Australia. Now we've got the Shires and uh, Wayne Ward Thomas out there at the moment. He went to Australia three times. One time he actually toured with the legend Slim Dusty. Those who know the British charts will know a pub with no beer. Slim Dusty was a national hero in Australia. He was one on the same tour as him and went out and did that. His music went on, Colorado stepped down and he changed its name to Cal Caledonia. Named after Scotland, the pride, and it went round. And that worked for a long, long time, playing Scottish feeling music. Then Caledonia stepped down, and it became a band that was simply known as the Jacks. By this time, his family had grown up, so he got most of his family in there. Being a Scot, he was tired to play anybody else, so he brought the family in. <laughs> they were cheap, he said. One of his highlights, many albums as he recorded, and if you're looking for him on uh, Google, or iTunes. Google the Eric Bogle song. Eric Bogle wrote a great, great song. Coming up this time of the year, it's very poignant. It's called the Greenfields of France. His version of it is probably one of the most definitive versions of the lot because he played fiddle with the Scottish Lament, Fleurs of the Forest, at the end of it. And if it doesn't choke you up, then you have no soul. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Hall of Fame, Geordie Jack. Jim said that I had, we lived in a little village 
on the same street and we couldn't afford to go to Wembley so we took part in a competition to get backstage tickets and that got us there. Um, and the years passed and we loved what we did. Uh, we made a lot of friends. Uh, the scene has changed. I miss Poacher, the Hillies, Mustang and all the guys we had the banter with. But it's so encouraging to see that uh, today the scene is growing a new generation and getting stronger and stronger. Um, I would say to them, the younger folk here, um, that one of the principles of our own group was that um, we were resistant to being pigeonholed. And so for us, it was, we loved country music because we were country guys. We were never Western. We never sang about how much we missed the prairies or it's a lonesome in the saddle since my horse died. <laughs> but we were country. And uh, I think uh, trying to get country into mainstream is the challenge for the future. Um, and all part of you guys to do it, you're well on your way. Thank you all very much.